Okay, good morning, girls. Um, sorry, I can't be there uh, to talk to you about work experience, but with the magic of technology, uh, I can be there via video. So um, today I was supposed to speak to you about work experience um, just very briefly. So I'm going to try and compact all of that into a 10, 15 minute video, um, but you can always come back and watch this whenever you need to. Um, if you're feeling bored on the holidays and want to get your work experience sorted out, um, this will be a great resource for you. So first things first, um, we head straight to msjpathways.com. I've sent um, several emails about um, work experience now and I've always directed you to this website. So just very briefly, you can see MSJ Pathways is where you go um, for lots of information about pathways and careers. So I put a lot of time and effort into putting these articles together. So feel free to um, sign up to the website as well. Um, you can get notifications every time I post something new. So we're going to focus on work experience. So in the menu, there's now work experience 2020. So just up here in the right hand corner. So what you'll find is um, if you hover over it, you'll have um, four different options for you to look at. So we've got work experience for students. That's what I'm going to take you through most of today. Um, it's all pertaining to you. Your work experience for employers. So if your employer has any questions about work experience, you can guide them to this. But once I know who your employer is, I'll be able to send them this link as well because it's got lots of important documentation for them, including their roles and responsibilities. I also have a link here about finding work experience. This will be really, really helpful for you in regard to finding a placement. So where do you start? Um, so I've given you, I'll give you some hints there. A couple of you have reached out um, saying that you're having trouble finding uh, work experience. That's totally fine. Not everyone can find something on the first go. That's very, very rare. You're very lucky if you have. Um, so I really advise you to look at that um, advice in that tab. And then lastly, there's safe at work activities. So they're going to be some important um, final documentation that you need to get together before you can actually go on work placement. So they're basically your occupational health and safety certificates. There's two different types. There is a general module and then there is a industry specific one. So the general module you could attempt today um, in your lunchtime if you want to. Um, and then your industry specific one can't be done until you actually have a work placement set up um, because that will be a very specific one relating to the area in which you're working. So I'm going to take us straight to work experience for students to get started. So just select that on your menu. So I'm going to explain a couple of things um, to help us out. There is also a presentation on here that you can access. I'm going to briefly go over it um, in this video today. Um, but you'll be able to um, access it at any time. So just so you know, everyone in Year 10 does need to do um, work experience. Now that goes for one week, so that's five days. So we set aside that week for you. Um, if you are uh, potentially at a, an, a business or an employer who can't meet um, those dates, let us know. So get in touch with myself or Ms. Anastasi. Um, and we can negotiate an alternative date for you as well. The students that are going on the Italy and France trip, you are actually excused from work experience. Um, I certainly don't expect you to go on work experience for two days and then head out on your trip. That might be a bit stressful. But if you'd still like to participate, again, just get in touch and we can organize some alternative dates for you as well. So I'll take you through this website. Uh, if you scroll down a little bit, there is the um, PowerPoint that I said we will go through or the presentation will go through in a little bit later. And that's just going to give you some helpful tips uh, in regard to work experience. So just um, want to highlight for you um, the dates for work experience are Monday the 23rd of March to Friday the 27th of March. So those are our official dates. There are no year, ten, uh, year 10 classes during those dates. Um, so that's when we have our work experience. Um, you can, again, have alternative dates, but you do need to speak with the learning leader or myself. Um, or next year, if it's the first week back, you decide that you need to do it on an alternative date, you do need to get in touch with Mrs. Gonzalez. So I put all this together to make this as simple as possible. Um, so hopefully you find this useful. Now, I just want to go over a couple of points in this presentation. So... Um, 
I've got a slide here that sort of explains why it's a really great idea to do work experience. So I'll let you read through that. Um, I also point out what work experience is. So just so you know, there's short term industry placements and they're just uh, designed to broaden your interests, experience and understanding of the world of work and career opportunities. So you'll observe different aspects of work in the industry that you choose and you might also help with a couple of different tasks. What's really important is that you should not be undertaking activities which require extensive training and expertise. So for example, if you're working at Melbourne, uh, Royal Melbourne Hospital, um, you can't perform open heart surgeries because that requires a very extensive training and expertise. So you should not be uh, doing activities like that. Um, this slide here just outlines the benefits. Um, so again, I'll allow you to read through that, but there are lots of benefits to doing work experience. I know lots of you are excited about doing it. I know lots of you aren't excited about doing it. Um, it's pretty daunting, um, but it doesn't have to be. But I'd say nine out of 10 people come back from work experience, if not more, probably. I should probably say it's probably 99 out of 100 people come back and say that it was an amazing experience and really worthwhile, especially if they took the time to find a good um, placement. So have a read through that. Um, I really want to point out again, it's observation based. So you're not really supposed to be undertaking real tasks or work. Um, what's really important is that you're not a replacement for a regular employee. That's really important. You should not be replacing anybody. It's just to give you a taste of the industry that you're looking at. So you should be observing a lot of things um, and then assisting with tasks that your supervisor or the workplace provider has for you. So you should be assisting with those tasks, not actually um, heading those tasks, for example. Now, you've got a couple of responsibilities, so I need you to read through them as well. Basically, when you're at work, you are following their rules, but you're also following the rules of the school, okay? So you would need to show up on time. You need to make sure that you're wearing the right uniform or clothes, okay? So following all school policies and codes of conduct at all times, but also the policies of that workplace as well. Some other important information to go through is that the minimum pay is $5 a day, but it's your responsibility to follow this up with the employer. Um, there are some exceptions to this payment. So if you're working for a Commonwealth department, there is absolutely no payments. If you work for a not-for-profit organization, they don't need to pay the $5. Um, you may find that some employers don't want to pay you. Um, they do need to pay you the $5. However, if you really want to work for them and um, you, you know, you're happy to work for free, um, you can donate your pay back to an employer, but you need to attach a signed note to your contract. Um, by So a signed note by your parent or guardian. Okay. I'll also point out that your placement needs to be completed here in Victoria. Um, you might be able to uh, do it in New South Wales and South Australia. There is extra paperwork that needs to be done. So let us know. We do have had students do that in the past at some um, really great placements. Um, and just that last bit is if, if you're under 15 at the time of placement, you do need to speak with me. Um, we might need to get some alternative dates for you. So you may not be able to go on work experience if you're under 15. Um, so... Just in regard to the tasks here, so this is just talking about the industry specific and the general modules. Um, the one thing I want to point out is that there are prohibited and restricted industries. So you're not to be placed in industries where there's unacceptable risk to your health, um, moral or material welfare, safety or well-being. So um, here's the list. So if you do need to take some more time to read through that list, please do so. Um, but you can see here, there's a few things that you can't do. I know some, uh, a couple of years ago, someone wanted to be a tattoo artist. Unfortunately, they can't work in a tattoo shop. So they'd need to wait until they uh, were 18 or had finished school to be able to actually do that. So just note that you can't work in those areas. These are the kinds of activities you cannot do on work placement as well. So the first one, they're administering medical treatments. That could be applicable for some of you that want to work in nursing and things like that, um, you can't do those activities. So your employer should be aware of that, 
Um, but if you do find yourself in these um, activities, you need to notify me straight away, or uh, sorry, you need to notify Mrs. Gonzalez straight away. These are some other activities uh, or things you should not be doing. So, you know, you should not be holding a firearm at work. Um, there's lots of things here. So please take note of these, um, you know, some of them like um, rubbish compactors. Uh, they're quite common in retail. So if you are working in retail, you need to make sure that you're not operating the rubbish compactor. These are things you cannot be exposed to as well. So some of them apply a lot in the medical industry. Uh, but one thing I'll point out is that second one, bullying, occupation, violence, work-related stress, sexual harassment, and discrimination. So these are really, um, we take these really seriously. Um, so again, if any of these things um, happen in your workplace, you do need to let us know straight away. So the rest of the um, slides here explain how to find your placement. So I actually want to scroll down a little bit and explain that. So you can always come back to this um, and have a look at it. So I've tried to make the simple uh, the process as simple as possible. Find an employer who is willing to host you. So you've just developed quite a few skills um, in your year nine program that will help you out. So one of the first things I would do is actually go face to face with an employer. So take your resume along with them and be confident. Um, I know that can be really daunting, but this is probably the most successful way of getting a placement. I'd say 95% of people that do this tend to get a placement. You can uh, call them, but just remember, you know, if you're phone phoning them, you want to speak to a manager, you don't know if they're busy or not. Um, they could. It's quite easy to dismiss you when you phone them. Same with online. If you're sending them an email, it's easy to ignore an email. So nothing really beats face-to-face. -face. However, we do live in a modern era. So it's totally acceptable to get in touch online. So some companies might have a Facebook page and you can get in touch with them on Messenger. Um, you can send them an email or you can submit a form on their website. So some businesses may actually advertise that they are looking for work placement or work experience students on their website. If they don't advertise it, it doesn't mean that they don't offer it. You just need to call them, email them, message them to find out. That last bit there, Google Maps, if you're really stuck on where you can work, um, Google Maps is great. So you can sort of zoom out to the area that you're willing to go to, so maybe around your house. And for example, you might just type in vet clinic and it'll show you all of the vet clinics that are nearby you. And then I would go through those businesses and start to get in touch with them. So it's actually quite easy. So once you've found your employer, that's the hardest bit done. Um, you do need to get quite a bit of information. So there's a few dot points there. They're basically the business details um, and you actually need to pop them into a database. So we need to collect that information. It goes into a database entry for us. Um, so take note of these details because you'll need to collect them from the employer. So I, I've made sure those are the dot points that we're asking for. So I'll just show you what it looks like. It's a Google form. So if you click on database entry here, it will take you to um, this Google form. So you can just see here, um, you start off with putting in your details and there's 10 different sections to it. So just follow that really carefully. Make sure you put in all of the required um, sections. So I believe I ask for things like the times that you're going to be working. So if you're not sure of the times, you can leave that blank, but you need to put in as much information as possible. So once you've done that, you can move down to this section. This is the work experience arrangement form. So this is also known as the contract. So whenever the teacher says the contract, this is what we're talking about. Um, so this is to ensure that everyone understands their roles and responsibilities and we have the correct insurance for you as well and the employer. So you need to fill it in with a black or blue pen and your writing must be clear and easy to read and all sections need to be included or completed rather. That includes an email address for the employer start and finish times. So you may need to enter some of those a little bit later on but they all need to be completed. The form will not be submitted if all the sections are not completed. So um, I'll just quickly show you what it looks like. So if you click on this link here, you can download a blank form. Now it'll download it from the Department of Education website. Please use this form. Don't use any other form because there are some 
versions floating out on the internet that are not the right version. So this is what it looks like. It's got this blue on it. So this is what we sometimes call it the blue form or the blue contract. Um, you need to input your details. Your work experience coordinator for next year is going to be Mrs. Gonzalez. Um, you can see here you've got the work placement details in here as well. The employer needs to sign this, so they pop in their name. So this is often the business owner or manager, and then they read through what they are responsible for, and then they sign. On the second page, you have your section. So you need to read through, tick all of them that you agree with it, if you agree with it, and then sign it. You then have a parent and guardian, or parent or guardian rather, read through it and sign it as well. Just so you know, we are a non-government school, so you can tick that, otherwise I'll tick it for you. Lastly is principal consent. So Ms. Dishon will be the last person to sign it. Please don't go and ask her to sign it yourself. Please submit this form to myself or Mrs. Gonzalez, and we will have it sent to Ms. Dishon to be signed. So if I just go back to the website, you'll just notice um, that I, that's what I outline in regard to the form. So they, those three sections need to be filled and signed out first. This is due by week two of term one, um, and it will be reviewed by the work experience coordinator and the principal. So a couple of other things, if you do need to travel in your employer's vehicle or stay overnight at accommodation that's not normally yours, uh, you do need to fill out a travel and accommodation form. If you're working with animals, there's also another form that you need to complete as well. If you're not 15 years old, as I said earlier, um, you will need to get in touch with me as soon as possible. So now for the due dates, um, you need to get all of your details entered into the database by week two of term one next year, that's 2020. You also need to submit your work experience arrangement form by week two of term one in 2020. Um, there's also the Safe at Work modules as I mentioned before. A Canvas assignment portable will be opened up for you next year. Those Safe at Work modules need to be completed by week five of term one. So that Canvas portal won't open until next year. So if you do the Safe at Work certificates um, over the holidays, save them as a PDF. That's really important to save them as a PDF and keep them on your computer or on your Google Drive, somewhere safe. So when it's time, uh, when it does open up, you can submit it and you are all good. If you can't meet any due dates, you need to speak with the work experience coordinator. So myself for this year, Mrs. Gonzalez next year. Please don't just try and ignore it. It won't go away. Um, it's important that you do action that. So lastly, that safe at work certificate. So if this is your occupational health and safety, we have what's called a general module and all of you can actually start that today. Um, your general module just goes over basic OHS or occupational health and safety. So there's some information to read. It's quite long and lengthy. So maybe get into a group and um, see if you can condense it a bit. And then you do need to do an online quiz. The industry specific module certificate, um, you can't actually do that one until you know where your work placement is. Um, so I'm gonna scroll right back up to the top um, and access it from there, safe at work activities. If I click on that, um, it'll take you to a more in-depth explanation of what those safe at work activities are. Now, I do also have another presentation on safe at work. Um, so please take the time to read through that. It explains what to do as well. Um, but I also have an explanation here. So your general module is here. If you click on this document here, it'll open up the PDF to help you read through that information. Um, and you can click on this link to do your test. Remember to save your results or your certificate as a PDF. Um, very quickly, just this industry specific, these are the categories. So for example, if you're working for a lawyer, there's no lawyer category. So what you would do is it would link up with the most relevant one. So that would be office and business administration. If you're working at a hospital, that would be health and community services. If you're working um, in a hair salon, that's quite easy, that's hairdressing. So if you're unsure, um, just simply uh, send me an email, come and speak with me. I'll be really happy to outline what's your industry specific module. So how do I actually do them? So if I click here to complete the test, 
um, you can do that for the general module and the industry specific module. So again, I'll take you to Department of Education, Safe at Work. Um, and this is what the website looks like. Um, I'll just point out, um, it does work best on a desktop computer. So uh, maybe just use your MacBook um, in order to do this one. So there's some instructions here on what you need to do. I'll show you very quickly without actually doing the test. You do pop in your details here. So pop in my details. Can you put the full name of the school as well, please? So there we go, autofill. And just your assessment module, you, it'll default to general and you can hit begin test. But when you're ready to do your industry specific, you can select the industry from this list. So if I do general and begin test, I'll just quickly show you what it looks like. You can see that you've got this multiple choice quest, uh, test. So reading the questions carefully and giving the most correct answer. So go through, you do need to get 75%. You hit submit and then it, if you get 75% and above, you'll have a certificate. You need to save as a PDF. So you can right click on that um, and save as a PDF. So they're the Safe at Work certificates. You'll be able to submit them next year through Canvas. So um, that's all I have to talk about with work experience. Um, it's a little long this video, but um, hopefully you'll find it helpful um, and this website really helpful. So I can't stress to you enough, head to the website, read through all of that information. If you do have any questions, please do get in touch with me. Um, you can come and see me at school um, or you can send me an email. I'm always happy to answer questions via email. All right, thanks.